Oh my goodness, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, thank you Jesus. Hallelujah, glory to God. Thank you Jesus, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Shalom, the Lord bless you. I welcome you in the name of Jesus, amen, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Please, if you're seeing me for your very first time, my name is Ethel Betangba, and this is Prayer and the Prophetic with Pastor Ethel. You are very much welcome in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God kept you alone because you're very, very favored. There is going to be a great explanation because this will answer questions about this particular prophetic word. It's going to be an answered question. This is going to be, oh, wow, okay, now I see. Oh, wow, okay, now I understand. The Bible says, they that are led by the uh, they that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. So one thing you must understand is that the ways of God are not the ways of man. God begins to look at people and he's like, okay, this is my plan for my daughter. This is my plan for my son at this point in time. And every time God picks interest in a man, sometimes it looks like the man suffers. And then other times it looks like the man is amazingly doing powerfully and all that I'll, 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 I'll talk about these two examples when the lord pick interest in a man why does it look like the first one it looks like the person suffers why because you begin to notice that what people are doing is what you cannot do you see some people doing what they are doing they are doing this they are doing that but there is something in you that is stopping you from doing it you know that this is not for me. This is not supposed to be me, you know. And sometimes, even when you want to do it, there is that conscience in the inside of you. There is that resistance in the inside of you. You feel so much resistance and you're looking at your life like, God, why me? You would have been somebody else like, okay, why did you pick me? Why did you choose me at all? Have that happened to you when you feel like you really want to be free? You want to do some kind of things? But there is something that keeps blocking you. There is something that keeps telling you this is not right and this is not for you. And then the moment you're obedient, you notice that you have peace. You notice that you're okay. Mm. That is what happens to people God begins to pick interest in. The second category of people are people whom when the Lord picks interest in them, you look at them, you admire them, you envy them like, oh, this person's life is so nice. This person is living an amazing life. Oh, now let me tell you, for everybody that you admire or that they are living an amazing life, they've been through a lot. Maybe you met them when they are now enjoying. Now, because in the first example that I said, when you start feeling like, oh, I want to do this, and God is like, this is not for you. This is not good. You know, you start feeling that limitation in your life. And sometimes the worst is when you feel like you're still young. And then sometimes you're like, why am I living like an old woman? Or why am I living like an old man? Like, I'm still very young. I'm, I'm supposed to be living life like, but God is like, this is not for you. Okay. So what is then? What then is for me, Lord? So that begins to happen to people whom the Lord picks interest. But when the people are done paying their prizes, people start envying them. Other people look at them and desire to be like them. Oh, I wish I was this person. I wish my life was like this. Honey, they've been through a lot. And never you desire from somebody what you've not heard their stories if you desire, it means maybe you want to go through what they've been through or less or more <laughs> even. So God kept you alone. Every time the Lord wants to bless a man, he will set you apart. He will remove you from the crowd. Sometimes you don't even feel like being around people. Sometimes you just want to be with, you don't even feel like being with your friends, your family. Sometimes you just want to be alone. 
you know, one thing about me is I am afraid of visitors. And the only reason I'm afraid of visitors is what are we going to be discussing about? So when somebody tells me I'm coming to visit, I'm like, oh my God, I pray this, this network. Oh my God, I beg you. I pray this network be stable this time around. When somebody says I'm coming to visit, I'm like, ah, <sighs> what are we going to be discussing? What are we going to be talking about? Like, okay, for how long would the person be? But if it's somebody that I'm used to, I can just see that I'm hearing. But if it's a conversation or it's something that I'm into, ah, I can talk. So I have two people who are going to look at me and be so surprised. One person looks at me like, Ethel doesn't talk. Another person looks at me like, ah, she talks so. We're chatting. Ah, you're chatting with Ethel is rare. The difference is I'm talking about you with what is my feel, with what I can better understand, with what I feel free talking about. The other person, we don't have the same feel of conversation, the same um, interest and all that. You understand? So that is what happens. So sometimes God is going to take you apart from some people, put you just alone. You know, when I was told I was coming to Dubai for ministry, I felt bad, like, oh, I'm going to be alone. But later on, I told myself, I'm always alone, even if even in my home country, I'm always alone. I have this, my amazing friend turned brother. Sometimes he will force me to take me out. He will get food and come and give me at home if I've not cooked. Sometimes he forces me, come and let's eat and all that. You know, that's one of the people I bond with, like, you know, that I could say, okay, even when I'm in Cameroon, we mostly, he's my contractor, we do a lot of things together and all that, you know. And that is because we have the same field of interest in what we were doing. You get it? So God will set you apart because the other people do not have that. The favor of God that is on you is his interest on you. And when God wants to favor and bless somebody, he brings them, he sets them apart. You've been set apart for a purpose. You've been set apart for a reason. Don't dare get under or fall under that depression again. The favor of God is on you. Make use of it right now. There's going to be a time you'll be crowded and you'll wish that you were alone. I'm telling you, you'll be crowded and you will wish that you were alone. I pray that the wisdom of God rest on you heavily in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, Oh, please, if this has been a great help and blessings to you, please do not forget to pray for me. Oh, my God. I forgot. Actually, I almost. Please do not forget to pray for me. Please, please call my name in the place of your prayer. Pray for me. Please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. You're welcome if you're a new subscriber. God bless you now. May the Lord bless you. Keep your cast his face to shine. And you may he be gracious to you. And may he give you peace, the shalom of the Lord. Nothing may sin. Nothing broken in the name of Jesus. I love you so much. I do. God bless you amazingly and abundantly.